a cattle magnate who, in the mid-1800s, orchestrated the movement of longhorn herds from Texas to New Mexico, Chisholm collaborated with Charles Goodnight and Oliver Loving to establish one of the largest cattle ranches in the American West. He also became embroiled in the Lincoln County War in New Mexico. Born in Hardeman County, Tennessee, on August 15, 1824, Chisholm's family relocated to Texas in 1837. As a teenager, he swiftly secured employment as a building contractor. Later, he assumed the role of county clerk in Lamar County. In 1854, Chisum resettled in Denton County, where he took up residence on Clear Creek, just three miles above the town of Bolivar. There, he began working for a prominent rancher as a cowboy and initiated the development of his own cattle herd. During this period, Chisum acquired a mulatto slave girl named Jensi from emigrants en route to California. Jensi, a beautiful 15-year-old, kindled a love affair with Chisum resulting in the birth of two daughters. At the outbreak of the Civil War, Chisholm freed all his slaves, including Gen Z. He would later provide Gen Z and his daughters with a home in Bonham, Texas, and financial support for their needs. In the early 1860s, Chisholm had successfully built up his own cattle herd, amassing over 100,000 head of cattle. He was among the pioneers who ventured to drive their herds into New Mexico. Chisum went on to establish a ranch in the Bosque Grande region, located approximately 40 miles to the south of Fort Sumner. Between 1866 and 1867, he formed a collaboration with fellow cattlemen Charles Goodnight and Oliver Loving to conduct cattle drives for the U.S. Army in Fort Sumner and Santa Fe, New Mexico. Tragically, Loving fell victim to a Comanche arrow in 1868, but Chisum continued his partnership with Goodnight and enjoyed success over the following five years. In 1875, Chisum acquired the South Spring Ranch, spanning 40 acres and situated three miles south of Roswell, New Mexico. He transformed this ranch into the hub of his vast cattle empire, which extended for a remarkable 150 miles along the Pecos River. During this period, Chisum struck up a friendship with Alexander McSween, a lawyer based in Lincoln County, New Mexico. McSween and John Tunstall found themselves locked in a bitter feud with Lawrence Murphy and James Dolan, who controlled the sole store in the region and monopolized the local economy. Chisholm threw his support behind McSween and Tunstall when they established a competing business in 1876, challenging the substantial profits that Murphy and Dolan were raking in. This ongoing conflict ultimately ignited what is now famously known as the Lincoln County War. While Chisholm himself didn't participate directly in the intense gunfights and violent clashes, he was recognized for offering refuge and financial aid to those who fought on the side of McSween and Tunstall. As the Lincoln County War unfolded, both McSween and Tunstall tragically lost their lives, and Billy the Kid became a wanted fugitive. Governor Lew Wallace extended amnesty to those embroiled in the bitter feud, with the exception of Billy. Even though Billy the Kid and Chisum initially supported the same side during the Lincoln County War, their relationship took a downturn after the conflict ended, and amnesty was granted to the participants. When Billy the Kid visited Chisum, believing the cattle baron owed him $500, Chisum refused to make payment. In response, Billy, along with his gang of rustlers, including Dave Rudabaugh, Billy Wilson, Tom O'Folliard, and Charles Boder, commenced cattle theft from Chisholm's herds. In 1880, Chisholm supported the election of Pat Garrett as Lincoln County Sheriff, who he believed could stop the cattle rustling problems in the area. Chisholm was right. In December of 1880, Garrett gunned down Tom O'Folliard and Charles Boder, effectively ending their lives. Shortly thereafter, Billy the Kid, Dave Rudabaugh, and Billy Wilson were apprehended. Although Billy the Kid managed to escape, Garrett pursued him to Fort Sumner, New Mexico, where he ultimately killed him on July 14, 1881. By 1883, Chisum had encountered a tumor on his neck and journeyed to Kansas City for medical treatment in the following year. The tumor was successfully removed and he returned to New Mexico. Nevertheless, his health continued to decline, prompting him to embark on a journey to Eureka Springs, Arkansas, 
to partake in the healing waters. Regrettably, the tumor re-emerged and grew in size. On December 22, 1884, he died of cancer. His body was returned to Paris, Texas, where he was buried. He left an estate worth $500,000 to his brothers Pitzer and James.